Life, Love, and Pop Pop Culture. Hi guys, I'm Danielle Delgado. And I am Chelsea Rendon. And you are watching Life, Love, and Pop Culture. I'm so excited to have you with me again, Chelsea. Ooh, yay. I remember I interviewed you before Vita even came out. Oh yes, yes, right before everything really yeah, happened. Started, right? <laughs> How has your life changed from then to now? Um I sleep a little bit less than I used to. It's been it's been crazy. Um, Stars has been pushing the show so much, which mm -hmm. is amazing. And so it's just like, ah. Yeah. But it's I feel like I'm the same. The only difference, really, I feel like, aside from the sleeping thing, is I moved. Mm -hmm. So now I live like in the area. And I'm around everybody. So yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's but yeah, that's the biggest difference for me. Yeah. Um, and how is it like being able to film like so close to where you grew up? It was amazing. Actually, um, I might have mentioned this before on a different, um, in like a panel or something, but the first two days when we were filming, it was a BDS scene mm -hmm. um, in the first episode. And my mom went to set the first day, but she only went to base camp. She didn't go to actual set. And then the second day she went to set and she started crying. And I'm like, what's going on? She grew up in the duplex that we were using as storage. Really? And so she was like, oh my God, are you using it? Are you using it? Are you filming? And we're like, oh no, like it's storage. Like, and she's like, I grew up in a one bedroom, that one bedroom with my six brothers and sisters and my mom. Oh my God. She's like, the rent was $50. That's so crazy. And like, I was like, oh my God. Like, so it was super like crazy because it was like so meant to be. Like it was written in the stars before, mm -hmm. you know? Like, cause it's like, how crazy is it that I would, we were using her like, that house, like, insane. yeah, and like, it was also the quickest 10 minute trip I ever took to set. <laughs> I always like have to drive like 45 minutes or yeah. so to get to set. So it was really great and just feeling like I was home, you know, like we use base camp at El Mercadito, which is a spot that like, if you grew up in like East LA, Boyle Heights, like you know about. And I remember one time Crafty was at a different location and then we got to like set and I was like, um, okay, well, can I get an elote? Cause I'm hungry. Like, <laughs> so they were able to bring me an elote from like three blocks away at Mercadito so to like where we were filming. Yeah. And I was like, hum, hum, hum. that's funny. And I was like, actually, I had a video on my Instagram stories. Okay, this show is unlike anything on TV right yes. now. How excited were you to be part of the show? It was honestly like a dream come true, because from the breakdown, like Mari is so awesome and she's so badass, and so I fell in love with it. And then once I got to meet Tanya and we met the rest of the cast and we actually were on set and doing it, it was just like, wow, we're really doing this, mm -hmm. you know? And it's the first of its kind. It's the yeah. first show that's by a female showrunner that's Latina, that is uh, all Latinx writing room, mm -hmm. that is all female department heads, that is all like people of color. Like it's, yeah. it, the directors were either female, people of color, or women of color, or queer, or you know what I'm saying? Like they all had something and everybody on set was, like I think predominantly was a Latinx set as yeah. well. Like we were always speaking Spanglish and stuff and it was just so amazing. And it's one of those things where it's like, wow, this is happening. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and like, it's so surreal. And I've been acting for almost 20 years now and it, I've never experienced that before. Yeah. Okay, obviously season one was a success <laughs> yes. because you guys got picked up for another season. Yes, we are continue telling our stories. How do you hope that your character story unfolds in season two? Honestly, I don't know. I feel like so many things could happen with her. Like you saw her take her power back in episode five, mm -hmm. but it's like, okay, what's going to happen now? Yeah. Like, is Lalo going to be able to like trick her again or something? Or is it she's gonna completely move on from that. Or is it gonna be like, you, like, you don't know what's gonna happen. And specifically my thing is so, I'm so interested in the Talalo situation, but then also with the sisters, like they bailed her out. So now she owes them money. So how is that gonna work out? Like, is she gonna pay them? Are they gonna wanna work for her? Like, is it gonna be like, come on woman, you gotta work for me. Or like, you know what I'm saying? And like, also that dynamic of that anger that she has towards Lynn and Emma, but also like the resentment towards Emma. Cause it's like, realistically, Mari wants to go back to college mm -hmm. and she couldn't, she had to take care of her family. So like the fact that Emma used that, like, oh, you get an education, that's how. And I'm like, education, like, <laughs> there's that little resentment that I have towards her too. Mm -hmm. 
So it's just interesting. I just kind of want to see how it all plays out. Like I'm, it's, I'm like an, I'm like a viewer. I'm like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? Tony, what are you guys gonna do? <laughs> you know, like I gotta go bug the writers' room and like be like, hey guys, <laughs> so what's going on? You wanna tell me? <laughs> tell me what's going on? I think we're all excited to see how season two plays out. Yes, I am super excited. Okay, as we all know, it takes a while to get like in this industry to break into this industry. Yes. So, what would you say has been your biggest obstacle along the way? My biggest obstacle is kind of myself because I'm not girly. Like I've become more girly in the last few years, so it was very hard for me to audition like for the cheerleader mm -hmm. because I would go in and be like, "Hey guys," and you could tell that I was kind of acting and it wasn't really natural. Yeah. Um. So that kind of I think for me minimized the things that I could go out for, and that's why I tend to have booked the chola or the tough chick sort of parts because that is me mm -hmm. and it's more natural and it comes easier um so i think that for me it's kind of like my own obstacle like mm -hmm. okay get into your feminine side and like be sexy and i'm like i don't know how to be sexy how to be sexy it's like who you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's that thing and so the last few years i've been i've kind of gotten in touch with my feminine side mm -hmm. and then also when i was in acting class last year um my teacher Michael Monks was like, you get in touch with your sexuality. You have it in there. You just gotta let it come out. Yeah. Like as, as simple as it is, like leaning over something, letting your hair down or something simple. And mm -hmm. he helped me a lot getting that out. And so I'm like, ooh, I kinda know what to do now. Like, like, I can't, he, can't, he, can't he, like channel in the sexy side. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But then I always do like kind of the stereotypical, like when you think of sexy, you think of a specific thing. Mm -hmm. But I realize that you have to find your own sexy and what's going to make you feel sexy. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be different. And I'm like, okay, I could do that. Because when I'm trying to do like this and like the eyes, and it never worked. And I'm like, oh, so I got to do my own thing. Like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You that know? Makes sense. That yeah. Whatever makes you feel sexy. I mean, let's bring it out. Yeah. I mean, you've okay. done so much already, but what do you want your fans to remember you for the most? I want them to remember me for being real. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that is my biggest thing. Like, even now, like, now I'm a series regular on a show and all my friends are like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I remember I posted something, I was moving uh, a couple months ago and I was like, hey, anybody got a hookup for boxes? And they're like, dude, you're a series regular, buy boxes. And I'm like, uh, I'm still voting on a budget, like hold up, <laughs> you know? And yeah. it's like, that's still the mentality that I have because it's like, yes, you can have all the money in the world, but you can't just throw it away. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be mindful. And so like, I still try to get Groupons, like hey, Tiffany Haddish, man. I'm like, Groupon, boop, boop. You know, and so it's like that, and like, yeah. I still go to my favorite taco place in Montebello, I still go to Mercadito, you know, and I'm still me, yeah. and I feel like that's never going to change. Thank you so much, Chelsea, for being with me again, and thank you guys for watching, and yeah. don't forget to tune in next time as we discuss more life, love, and pop culture. Pop culture. If you enjoyed my interview, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to look out for new videos every Wednesday.